Hello uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back po sa ating YouTube channel. And dito muli ang iyong kapangarap, kapbalitaan at kakampi, Sami Bingwasan Istoke para ipagpatuloy yung ating discussion sa subject na Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation with the Intelligence. Ito na po yung part 7 ng ating uh, subject na ito. No? At ang focus po ng ating uh, discussion or talakayan ay yung pong phases of criminal investigation. Okay? So ano nga ba yung pong mga ating tatalakayin sa subject or sa topic na ito? So topics na i-discuss natin. Phases of criminal investigation. Okay, ano nga ba yung phases or stages of criminal investigation ladies and gentlemen? We have initial investigation, we have follow-up or in-depth investigation, we have also final or uh, concluding investigation, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? And uh, these phases of investigation ay akma lamang na ma-attain yung pong threefold aim of criminal investigation. No? Yung initial investigation na tinatawag din na preliminary investigation, The uh, aim of that is to identify the guilty uh, party. Yung pong follow-up or in-depth uh, investigation, ang aim naman yan, doon sa threefold aim of criminal investigation, is to trace, locate, and eventually arrest the perpetrator. And final or concluding investigation, yung aim naman yan is to provide evidence of criminal guilt. Okay, so ating tunghayan, isa-isa, at tatalakayin natin ang mga detalye bukol doon po sa mga phases ng investigation na ito. Nain natin yung po initial investigation. Okay? So, initial investigation or preliminary investigations is focused in identifying the perpetrator. Yan, which is the first fold aim of investigation under the PNP setting. No? Why? Because it is important in the first part of the investigation to recognize as to who is the perpetrator of the crime. It is a mainly, uh, or it is mainly established as this will uh, give investigators as to who committed the uh, crime. No? So the main focus of initial investigator investigation is to identify the guilty party, take note of that, or identify the perpetrator. Okay? So what are the methods of identification? No? Uh, there are uh, different methods of identifying the uh, uh, identity of the perpetrator. So, what is method of identification? It refers to the ways and means employed to uncover the uh, personality of the person who may have committed an act in which under the existing law is regarded as a crime. Okay, so syempre para ma-identify mo ang isang taong gumawa sa isang karumal-dumal na krimen, meron pong mapamamaraan na pwedeng gamitin yung pong ating mga investigador para alamin kung sino nga ba ang gumawa sa isang krimen. Okay, na masasabi nating krimen doon po sa ating existing criminal laws. Yan. So, ano-ano nga ba yung pong mga methods of identifying perpetrators? Ating tunghayan po sa susunod na slide, no? Okay, so under the methods of identifying perpetrators, una po dito ay yung pong confession or admission, no? So, what is uh, admission or confession? Admission or confession by a suspect is major objective of every investigation. The confession is an excellent means of identifying the criminal. And so from the point of view of proving the guilt in the trial, a consideration that will overlap in this uh, discovery, it must be supported by other corroborative evidence. Okay? Pag sinabi natin corroborative evidence, kailangan po ng karagdagang ebidensya, no? Para po mapatunayan yung pong pagkakasala ng isang uh, tao. Yan. So, pag sinabi natin corroborative evidence of different kinds that tend to prove same fact. Yan. Magkakaibang klase ng ebidensya liban sa kanyang pag-amin, sa kanyang kasalanan, kailangan pa ng mga karagdagang ibang klase ng ebidensya. No? 
The corpus delicti must be separately established in order to support uh, conviction. So, ano nga ba yung corpus delicti? Yung po yung tinatawag nila na body of crime. Pag sinabi pong body of crime, it refers to the essential elements of the body of crime, which is defined under our criminal laws. No? Ayan. A confession may be denied in court and unless an affirmative show of voluntariness can be presented by the prosecution. Ano ang confession? Confession is the declaration of the accused expressly acknowledging his guilt of the charge may be given as evidence against him. Okay, pag sinabi natin confession, ito po ay direktang pag-amin sa isang krimen or sa isang kasalanan. For example po, ang tinanong sa kanya, ikaw ba ang pumatay? At ang sagot, opo, yan po ay direkta na pag-amin. No? Ayan. Uh, maliban doon, ang confession din ay yung pong pag-amin ng lahat-lahat ng mga pangyayari. Yan, kapag ka sa tanong ng investigador, ang sagot mo sa lahat ng tanong niya ay opo, no? Yan. Definitely, that is uh, other uh, type of confession. So, dalawa po kasi ang uh, definition ng confession. It is either you have uh, admitted all the facts and circumstances regarding the crime, and second is the direct acknowledgement of guilt, no? Then we have admission. Admission is the acknowledgement of only some elements of the crime and it is not tantamount to confession. Kung sinabi nating admission, mga kapangarap, ito po'y pag-amin lamang sa mga pangyayari. Okay? Doon po sa isang krimen. Pag-amin sa mga pangyayari or circumstance lamang. Okay? Yan. For example, ang tinanong sa'yo, andong ka ba sa crime scene? Opo. Ayan. Nakita mo ba yung buong pangyayari? Opo. Hmm. Nahawakan mo yung biktima? Opo. Ikaw ba ang pumatay? Hindi po. Ayan. Di ba? Inamin mo yung tatlo pero hindi yung isa. Ang inamin mo ay mangilan-ngilang katotohanan lamang tungkol po doon po sa isang krimen. At hindi mo po inaamin yung pong pagkakasala. No? Yan po. Yung difference ng confession and admission. Okay, second method of identification is eyewitness testimony. Ayan. So, the identification is made by several objective person who are familiar with the appearance of the uh, uh, person who uh, and who personally witnessed the uh, commission of a uh, crime. No? So, uh, uh, ito po yung uh, eyewitness nakita yung buong pangyayari. Di ba? Oo. Oh. I witness testimony. Okay? Yan. So, ito po ay pag-identify sa pamamagitan po ng mga testimonya, ng mga testigo na nakasaksi sa paggawa sa isang uh, krimen at kanilang personal na nakikilala yung pong tao na gumawa ng krimen. Yan. Then, pangatlo po ay yung pong tinatawag na circumstantial evidence In the absence of confession and eyewitness, the identification of criminal may be established indirectly by proving other facts or circumstances from which either alone in connection with other facts the identity of perpetrator can be identified or can be inferred. Ito po yung pagdudugtong-dugtongin yung pong mga circumstances no? para matukoy yung pong pagkakakilanlan nung isang suspect or yung pong perpetrator. Di ba? So, pagdudugtong-dugtongin. Yan. For example po, ay meron pong nakakita doon po sa isang tao na doon sa crime scene. No? Yan. Pero hindi niya personal nakita yung pagpaslang uh, or paggawa nung isang krimen. Pero nakita lang siya sa oras din kung kailan nangyari yung krimen. Tapos, another circumstance, nakita na siya na nung umalis mula sa crime scene ay meron na siyang daladala. Yan, sa kasong robbery of course, or robbery with homicide, gano'n, no? Yan, so ibang tao ulit ang nakakita sa kanya. So, magkaibang circumstance na kung saan iisa lang ang tinutumbok na facts. Yan, okay? Ito po yung pagdudugtong-dugtong or pagtatahitahin ng mga circumstances, no? para makilala yung pong isang taong gumawa ng isang krimen. Yan po, circumstantial evidence. Then, D, we have identification through physical evidence. The physical evidence 
found at the crime scene, of course, no? So, uh, ano yung mga iba't ibang klase ng physical evidence na pwedeng gamitin to identify the person who committed the crime? We have uh, what we call as associative evidence. Ano ba yung mga associative evidence? The physical evidence found at the crime scene of the crime during the course of investigation that could link, ba? link, ah, ikinokonekta, hmm. link or connect to the uh, crime, okay, perpetrated by criminal by means uh, of a uh, clue materials, person, property, or the characteristics, pattern, or procedure deducted from arrangement of object at the uh, crime scene. Ayan. So, mga ebidensya na pwede pong uh, uh, mag-connect doon po sa isang tao, doon po sa isang krimen. Okay? Ayan. So, then, we have uh, tracing evidence. These are physical evidence which assist the investigating officer in locating the suspect and most commonly found in theft and robbery uh, cases. Ayan. So, uh, tracing evidence. Pwede pong magamit para po matukoy kung saan yung location ng isang uh, tao. No? Uh, from the word tracing. Trace. Okay? Yan. So, example po ng mga associative evidence ay yung pong uh, uh, shoe prints, di ba? fingerprints. Ayan. Uh, yung pong mga tracing evidence, for example, sa robbery, nakahulog po ng wallet na kung saan andun po yung identity ng taong nagnakaw. Di ba? Uh, pagka nakahulog ng wallet, meron pong identification card. Sa identification card, meron pong address na nakalagay doon. Kung saan uh, yung pong address na yon ay uh, pwede mong or yung pong identity uh, document na yon ay pwede mong makita yung pong pwedeng uh, pupuntahan ng tao pagkatapos niyang magnakaw, pagkatapos niyang gawin ang isang krimen. Okay, ayun po mga kapangarap. No? Then we have uh, corpus delicti evidence. Ano yung mga yon? These are objects or substances which may be part of the body of the crime. Okay, the body of the uh, crime, body of the suspect or subject, guns, knife, slug recovered from the cadaver during autopsy, body fluid, blood, fingerprints, footprints, and etc. Ayan. So, corpus delicti uh, evidence. Okay. Then, we have identification through forensic science. This method is done through the aid of expertise of different forensic services such as uh, DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, fingerprint, odontology, and other field of forensic science. Okay, so yun po yung iba't ibang klase ng pag-identify sa perpetrator, ladies and gentlemen. No? Then, uh, the second phase of criminal investigation is known as follow-up investigation or in-depth investigation which is focused to locate and trace the whereabouts of the perpetrator and eventually arrest that person as to place of residence, workplace, and hangout places. Okay, so ito po ay nakatoon. No? Pag na-identify na yung perpetrator at hindi pa siya or hindi pa nahuhuli, then definitely, ladies and gentlemen, kailangan po magkasan ng tinatawag natin na follow-up or in-depth investigation para siya po ay uh, malocate at eventually ma-arrest po yung pong suspect or yung pong perpetrator. Ito po yung tinatawag na follow-up investigation. No? Yan. Masasabi na case ay solved na. Letter A, if the offender was identified. B, the, uh, there is sufficient evidence to charge him. C. The offender was taken into custody. D. The offender has been charged before the prosecutor's office or court. Or Delta. The offender was convicted by final judgment for the commission of crime. Okay, so under Napolcom Circular 2012-006, okay, a case is considered solved if the offender has already uh, been charged before the prosecutor's office or to the uh, court. No? Ayan. Bakit? No? Tandaan nyo po yung aim ng criminal investigation to identify the guilty party. Na-identify na siya. 
okay, to arrest the guilty party. Okay, then, uh, of course, you have provide the uh, evidence of criminal guilt. Yan. So, kapag ka nakasuhan mo na sa prosecutor's office, syempre, na-determine na ng prosecutor na meron pong probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof. Therefore, you have already provided evidence. Yan. So, ayon sa Napolcom Circular, no, 2012-006, case is solved. Kailan na sasabi na case is solved? A case shall be considered solved. When the following elements concur, the offender has been identified. Na identify na siya, di ba? There is sufficient evidence to charge him. Siyempre, hindi naman na uh, kakasuhan ng prosecutor's office at hindi magpe-prepare yan ng criminal information at ipa-file sa court kapag ka wala pong probable cause to belief, no? Then the offender has been taken into custody, na arresto na po siya, and the offender has been charged before the prosecutor's office or court for appropriate jurisdiction no so hindi po kailangan na makonvict yung tao dahil trabaho na po naman yon ng prosecution no so ang trabaho na lang ng police kapag ka pino-prosecute na yung kaso no is to present himself during trial syempre no yan another question no it is an extrajudicial or maybe judicial evidence which fall short as direct acknowledgement of guilt. Letter A, admission. B, confession. C, judicial evidence. Or delta, extrajudicial evidence. Or extrajudicial evidence, which may be, uh, or which falls short as direct acknowledgement of guilt. Ibig sabihin, bitin para maging direct acknowledgement of guilt. Ibig sabihin, inamin na yung uh, ibang pangyayari, pen, pero hindi lahat. Kaya yung po ay tinatawag na admission. Okay? So, admission is uh, admitting some facts. Yun nga, yun sabi natin ay uh, pag-amin sa mangilan-ngilang pangyayari lamang at hindi inamin lahat ng pangyayari. Ang confession naman ay admitting all the facts and circumstances or uh, ang isang definition ng confession is the direct acknowledgement of guilt. Direktang pag-amin sa pagkakasala or sa isang kaso. No? Yan. Then, judicial evidence, all testimony or documents or all things personally examined by the court, while extrajudicial evidence, it is only known to the courts by way of inference or presumption. So, kailangan pa ng mga karagdagang ebidensya no? Yan, para ma-presume na totoo nga yung pong nilalaman nun. For example po ng extrajudicial evidence, ay yung pong extrajudicial confession kapag ka umamin po yung pong uh, uh, perpetrator sa police station so kailangan mo pong papirmahin di ba na kusang loob niyang isinasalaysay yung kanyang pag-confess kailangan meron ding pirma ng abogado no? yung po yung mga additional evidence no para mapatunayan na siya nga po ay umamin okay so that is the difference of admission and confession okay so, take note of the uh, three phases of criminal investigation, ladies and gentlemen, in their purpose. No? Uh, first phase is initial investigation at ang uh, purpose niya is to identify the guilty party. Second phase is follow-up or in-depth investigation which, is, uh, which has the focus to uh, trace, locate, and eventually arrest the perpetrator. And third is final investigation or concluding with the focus to provide evidence of criminal uh, guilt. Ayan. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you very much sa inyong pakikinig. I hope uh, meron po kayong natutunan sa ating uh, very short video presentation tungkol po sa phases of investigation. At kapag ka meron ka pong natutunan, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the bell button and to uh, click all para ikaw po ay uh, uh, ma-update kapag ka nag-upload po ako ng mga bagong video tungkol sa subject na Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation with Intelligence. Kay muli, ito po ang inyong kapangarap, kabalitaan at kakampi, Sami Bingwasan Estoke.